Yo, 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 what's up? What's really good? It's your boy Brandon Bravon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life. Like I said yesterday, I promised we would have a Sports Plus Life talking ish today to get some more picks. Still don't have Marcus's or Aaron's picks, but I do got Tony on the line. What up, bro? Yo, what's going on? Been a you 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 you've been a stranger. You won't on last week, but I know you got um You've been a busy man, a busy man, but how's everything? Everything is everything. Everything is sports plus life. <laughs> hey, I like that. Okay, no, I like that. <laughs> okay. Well, I saw um, your Cowboys took care of business last night against the Giants. I actually, I don't know if you know, but I actually did pick Dallas to win that game because I don't believe in the Giants yet. Um, but I will say this, though. Um, I think the notion of the NFC East nickname, the NFC Lease, I think is going to have to kind of come to a halt because after next week, after this week's games, I mean, my prediction is that you'll have one 4-0 team and two 3-1 teams because I have Philadelphia winning, uh, albeit tough game. Um, I do have Dallas beating Washington, and I have the Giants bouncing back against Chicago. So that's pretty impressive. That'll be pretty impressive for a division if you have one team at 4-0 and and two teams at 3-1. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're gonna be. G-Man gonna beat them Bears though, especially with Shepard out now too. How well? How long is he out for? Season. Oh, what happened to him? He's done for the season. ACL. Oh man, damn, that sucks. Well, I mean, hey, well, you know what? They're gonna have to. They, they need to use Kadarius Tony more. If you ask me. Yeah, he can't stay healthy either. Well, I do. I do have them. I have them beating the Bears because I mean. Um, I I do respect the Giants' defense, um, even though the Bears are, are have playmakers on their defense as well. I just see them at I just see them at home bouncing back, winning that game for no other reason, you know, but the fact that they're at home and now they're probably angry because they had the lead, gave up the lead, and then lost. Right. So. Yeah. So, what was your takeaway from the week of games? Um, there were a lot of upsets. I, the football pool was jacked up. I probably got three wins. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, all them picks went left. Like, all of them. Was, uh, like, Colts and Chiefs. I mean, everything went left. Um, I, I feel bad for Josh Allen because Josh Allen didn't lose that game. Um, incompetence lost that game. A comp- incompetence around Josh Allen lost that game. Uh, because they should have won that game. The Bills should have. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it's an interesting thing. And now with um, with uh, uh, old boy from Patriots going down, yeah, it's a two-team. You, oh, Mac uh, Jones? Yeah. Yeah, Mac Jones. It's a two-team race over there in the East. Yeah, um, yeah, it is amazing that the Bills lost that game when they doubled up Miami on every statistical stat known to man in that game. Um Ben but don't break worked for Miami. They worked for the Dolphins. Um my my yesterday my theme for week 3 was after all of that shit y'all talked about blank. Okay? And I can sit here and say as 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 being a grown adult, after all of that shit I talked about the Cowboys, they're sitting at 2 and 1. After all of that shit, everybody talked about the Chicago Bears. They're sitting at 2 and 1. After all of that shit, everybody talked about the Las Vegas Raiders. They're 0 and 3. After all of that shit, everybody talked about the Los Angeles Chargers. They're 1 and 2. After all of that shit, everybody talked about me included about my Denver Broncos. Somehow, some way, we're 2 and 1. That was my theme for the week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um if I had to give an early MVP right now me personally I would give it w- w- with everything that's happened just with the results right now I would have to give it to Jalen Hurts and um or Lamar Jackson. I I, be- I would say Jalen Hurts but when I hear people say Lamar I can't argue I'm just looking at the yeah, record. Lamar Jackson, bro, that dude is 80%. Are they are 80%. 80% of their offense. Yeah, Lamar is beasting. Lamar is truly beasting. But, I mean, I, what I'm seeing, I knew that Lamar Jackson could do what he's doing. I knew he could do this. I ain't see this coming from Jalen Hurts. That's why, that's that's the way I look at it. I knew Lamar, I mean, because Lamar's already won an MVP. 
So I knew that he was capable of stepping it up and taking it to another level. I expected him to, especially since he's betting yeah, on himself. But, yeah, but see, here's the thing, and here's the difference. And and I actually heard heard uh, but it, it was a conversation about some NFL execs still talking about uh, Lamar Jackson not being uh, being like the eleventh best quarterback in the NFL. I'm like, nigga. Oh, they anyway, they, they tripping. Yeah, they tripping. The, 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 the thing with Lamar is Baltimore's defense is terrible. They don't have this. What the Philly surrounded that dude with a wealth of talent. You know what I'm saying? On both sides of the ball. They put him in that. If he couldn't succeed in this, then he would just be gone next year. Um, with lesser talent, he, he didn't perform quite like he is now. So Lamar is performing irregardless. Like I said, I know, uh, I know I've seen Lamar do this, but I did not see this. I mean, when I'm talking about Jalen Hurts' whole game has taken a step up, has taken a step to another level. The accuracy, everything. Talent. I understand talent. about I understand about talent, but I will say this about I will say this about Baltimore though. Rashad Bateman can play. Duvernay can play. We know what Mark Andrews is. Philly had to look what Philly went out and acquired. They had to acquire multiple pieces. And again, even from a defense perspective, you know, um, I'll say this about the, the Eagles and, and, and um, the NFC East, just in general. Um, yeah, our records are what our records are, but we ain't really played nobody yet. Philly, Philly is undefeated, but they ain't played nobody yet. Um, the, the tests are coming up. The real tests are coming up. Um, Rams, you know, the real test are coming up. So we shall see. Well, I, I think, will be I, well, I don't. Soon. If the Lions pull that game out, then people look at Philly differently and look at this whole Jalen Hurts MVP thing. Lamar is Lamar. Lamar is balling 80%. That's but I, I, I think that. 80% without the talent. But I think that, um. I think people are looking at Detroit differently anyway. To me, the only thing Detroit needs to do now is just learn how to win. Learn how to close games out because they opened my eyes with that second half against Philly. Then they really opened my eyes with what they did against Washington. They should have beat Minnesota. But then you look at Minnesota, who else who Philly also beat. They're 2-1. and one. They're tied for first place. You know, it's a three-way tie right now in the NFC North, Green Bay, Chicago, and uh, Detroit. But um, – Either way, I mean, but Lamar, I mean, the the notion of Lamar can't stand in the pocket and pass, may please, may please. Lamar is dropping dimes on dimes on dimes on dimes. But I knew he could do this. I yeah. knew I knew that he could do this. Now, what do you um So you said Sterling Shepard is out for the season. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen in um let's look at the AFC North. Just for just for a quick second, what do we have in the AFC North? Speaking of Lamar, we got the Ravens two and one. Do you think that by week nine or week ten, Jacoby Brissett could give Kevin Stefanski something to think about? Uh, possibly. Possibly. Because he's really playing well, and he has developed a good rapport with Amari Cooper. This is see. Yes, but but I, I say possibly with a a a, a you know, I mean, me, with an anything is possible type possibly. Um, it, it's sort of like the Cooper Rush thing, you know, with Jerry Stern, and it's not for real, but he you know just has something to talk about. He's stirring the stirring the pot up. Um, you don't you most of the time you don't want to disrupt a team that they're winning, and you know got and like you said, chemistry going on and this that, and the other, but. You can't. You can't stay with him. You just you can't stay with him because there's so much money and so much investment tied in. You know, to your starting quarterback, you gotta. You can't stay with him. So let's say Cleveland is seven and four <clears throat> after eleven games. You still making the switch? If seven and four. You're going. Yeah. If they're seven and four, you're going back. You're going to Deshaun quickly. If they're seven and four. Because that's that's pretty easy, yeah. You know I mean, but it, it's it's harder if they only take one loss, you know, until Deshaun comes back. We'll go undefeated. Well, they've already lost the game. No, no, I know that, but I'm just saying from here on out. Oh yeah, well, oh yeah, like if they're ten and one, no, you can't switch then. Right. So it's 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 one of those things, you know. It's one of those things. But if he's if they got four losses, then yeah, that's pretty. You can. It's pretty easy because you can arguably look at the AFC and say. You know, two 
more losses than they out of the playoffs, maybe. <laughs> right, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I know the game of the day on Sunday was built to be Miami versus Buffalo, and it was a very, it was a very good game. To me, the surprise of the day was Jacksonville over the Chargers. Yeah, I didn't know that 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 uh, Herbert was hurt as bad as he was. So it's not really that surprising, given you know how, how much he was hurt. No, he's uh, hurt. I, I, he's hurt. Hurt. I didn't expect him to get. I didn't expect them to get beat beat like that, even with him hurt. But yeah, yeah, because him getting him being hurt ain't got a damn thing to do with their defense. Yeah, this is true. And I true. think I think Jacksonville, I think they're the best team in that division. I think Jacksonville. Um, Doug Peterson is the perfect coach for that for Trevor Lawrence. They have talent, and you now you, you never know Jacksonville has talent because they don't have they're not a big market, and you know they have to be really good to pay attention to them for for uh, for the right. national uh, spotlight to be put on them. Um, I think that division is murky at best. I don't I don't know what to make of the Colts. They I mean they beat Kansas City, but I don't know what to make of them. I don't believe in Tennessee either or Houston. I think the most complete football team is Jacksonville. And as far as the Chargers goes, yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. Yeah. And I think you're going to see another season where they don't, where they could possibly not make the playoffs. Remember, I said that my dark horse teams to get a wild card was Miami. The uh, That final wild card was Miami and the Chargers. Well, you know, if Justin Herbert is hurt, and yeah, he had fractured rib cartilage, and you know defenses ain't gonna do nothing but go for them ribs. He and he's six foot six, so it's easy to hit him. So he's yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's hurt. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. So uh, let's get to it. Um, let's see. First game of next week, uh, the Thursday night game, is a neutral field game. Between those undefeated Miami Dolphins and those Cincinnati Bengals who finally got on the win column. Who you got? Uh, Miami's defense played pretty well against Josh Allen, so I'm going to take Miami. All right. Minnesota at New Orleans. I'm going to take Minnesota. Jameis is another hurt. Uh, thing his old back problem. So I'm, I see. I'm, I'm, I keep I'm forgetting. Take... I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, that injury is real too. Cleveland at Atlanta. Hmm. I'm gonna take Atlanta. The ATL. I know who you're gonna pick with Washington at Dallas. I don't even need to. Yeah, I mean, I picked Dallas too, so, you know. <laughs> uh, Seattle at Detroit. Uh, Detroit. Here's a, a, a pick em game. Tennessee at Indianapolis. I think the Titans. I think the Titans. Okay. Chicago at the Giants. Bears. Jacksonville at Philadelphia, the Doug Peterson Bowl. I hate to take Philly, but I, I'm, I'm going to take Philly over the Jags. Oh, I just knew you was going to say Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the Jags play them tough. But it, I, think, I think that's going to be a very good game, actually. Uh, the Jets at the Steelers. Give me the J-E-T-S-T-S Jets. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know if that's an upset special, but I'm sure they're the underdogs. Um, Big game, Buffalo at Baltimore. Talk about MVPs, huh? Uh, I think Buffalo bounces back. Okay. Okay, let's see. One of my pencils just broke. Hold up. I think Buffalo bounces back. The Chargers at the Texans. Texans. You got the Texans. Okay. Yep. Hell 
health is a thing. Herbert won't be playing most likely, so yeah. Now, see if Herbert doesn't play, I think uh, I think uh, uh, I think everybody would probably change their pick. Um, Arizona at Carolina. I don't see I don't see multiple crack really cartilage all that healing within a week. So there's that. Good point. I mean, that's true. They'll put him in a flak jacket. They'll put him in a flak jacket if he plays, but one hit and he's gonna be on the sideline. All right. Well, Arizona at Carolina. Carolina. I have no faith in the Cardinals anymore. Okay. The Packer. The New England Patriots at the Green Bay Packers. Packers. My Denver Broncos versus the Las Vegas Raiders. One terrible offense with a good record against a decent offense with a bad record. <laughs> uh, give me them, give me them Raiders. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fourteen to twelve. <laughs> you see, we just won a game, eleven to ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sunday night football: the Chiefs at the Bucks. Hmm. Bucks. And next Monday night football, uh, the Rams at the 49ers. I'm going to take the Dirty Niners. Okay. Okay, so Tony's picks are as follows. He has Miami over Cincinnati, Minnesota over New Orleans, Atlanta over Cleveland, Dallas over Washington, Detroit over Seattle, Tennessee over the Colts, the Bears over the Giants. The Eagles over Jacksonville. The J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets over the Steelers. Buffalo over Baltimore. Houston over the Chargers. Carolina over the Cardinals. Kyler Murray, study your playbook. The Packers over the Patriots. The Raiders over the Broncos. The Bucks over the Chiefs. And the 49ers over the Rams. Sound about right? That's about right. Now, there is something that I wanted to talk to you and specifically you about. I didn't talk about this with anybody else yesterday. Ime Udoka, what say you? Um, so, everybody is focusing on the cheating dynamic. That's not what the issue is. Um, he likely doesn't get suspended for cheating. He, gets, he, gets, he's get, he got suspended because the young lady cut it off, and he... Uh, kept coming after with unwanted comments, advances, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's the reason why the suspension, and that would be warranted because that is sexual harassment. A consensual relationship, ir- irrespective to, you know, the morality of cheating or whatever, blah, 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 is one thing. That workplace harassment, you know, you know what, it's me too. So he, they have to do something, and that's what it is. She ain't want it no more, leave her alone. Well, I think both of them were uh, are, you know, just as wrong. But my thing is, is that okay? It was consensual. That's the that's that's the. Whole yeah, right. So so why so why is he the only one being suspended? If they they both they both broke well, company no, the, policy. Well, the problem is he didn't get suspended because of cheating. Yeah, I mean the morality thing with cheating. That's not what it is. What it is is he. That's a subordinate to him. So basically, after she decided that she didn't want to deal with him anymore, he kept coming after her. You understand? In the workplace type shit. Kept coming after. She said, I'm done dealing with you. And he didn't accept no for an answer. That's why he's suspended. Because she had proof that he just kept, she told him it was over and he just wouldn't take no for an answer. So that point, it becomes harassment. You know what I'm saying? They, they can't stop consensual relationships, even though they discourage it. They can't stop consensual relationships. But workplace harassment, which is what he was doing at that point, yeah, you're going to get your dick knocked in the dirt for that. Well, I think I, I don't I think Boston shouldn't have – Boston didn't have to make this public. I think, you know, for – I mean, because I'm pretty sure stuff like they this happens to. all the time. I don't think they, they should have made to. it public. They had to make it public. How are you going to suspend a man and not not make it public? Do you okay? Well, do you think do you think if the exact same situation had happened with Brad Stevens, do you think they would have handled it this way? Yes, I don't. It's me too. It's me too. You have you literally have to handle it this way. You got to be fully transparent because if not, it looks like a cover up, and then that makes the the, the organization liable. Um, they had to. 
they had they had to put it out there the way they put it out there and take the chance that it. I don't fault them, and I think if it was Brad Stevens, the exact same thing would have happened the exact same way. Uh, again, it's not about an affair. It, it's not about cheating. Everybody, you know, the people that 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 are paying attention is. It's not about that. The, or, the organization made their position clear on that particular subject. But the but the the workplace harassment after the young lady said it was over. This went on for months. Like I'm not talking about once or twice. This this issue was going on for like six months. So at that point, you know, you'd figure something going on like six months and she kept her mouth closed. She was trying to ride it out and just hope it went away. And when it got too much, she finally opened her mouth. So, I mean, at that point, he, he'd get what his hand called for because he should have just left it alone. We, I don't, I don't think he should have. I don't think he should have engaged in the actions in the first place. But I, if my message to Ime Udoka is, bro, just quit. You're not coaching there no more. I, to, to me, the whole suspension thing is laughable. Fire him or keep him. But the suspension thing to me seems like a, a, a public humiliation tactic. I would just quit. That's just me. I would cut my losses, chuck the deuces, and reevaluate my life. Because apparently he's, I mean, because the way he's moving is not the way he should be moving. I mean, whether I think Boston is handling this wrong or not, what he did was wrong. I mean, he bought it on himself. I just don't like the way the Celtics are handling it. The, are handling the situation. I think there are ways that I think it could have been handled differently. I see what you're saying about me too. I I I understand totally, but irregard. I mean, regardless of uh, of what how they're handling it, Emei Udoka was wrong. Now I would not let Boston publicly castrate. I mean, uh, figuratively castrate me. I would quit. That's just me, because he got enough shit to deal with at home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying now? Yeah, but you know what. You know what? That's but it's <sighs> during this era. It's been so many dudes in this same position: white, black, other. Like literally, politicians, sports figures. It, it, it's been public figures, um, people in the music industry. It's 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 all been kind of the same thing and kind of the same global treatment. I don't necessarily look at them as publicly castrated because there's. If you read their statement, just in general. Um, it touches, it talks about literally what I'm talking about. It doesn't get into his personal business with Nia Long and all this other stuff. It literally talks about the, basically the unwanted advances at that point, which is sexual harassment. I don't think that's publicly castrating them. Now, the suspension dynamic, you know, that's their option. They may, they may want to bring him back as coach. Um, they could have just, they could have walked away from him. Um, he could have quit. He could have resigned. Oh, like he's not resigning either. So no, I know, I know, I know he's not. There's, there's two sides to that coin. Now, do oh, you do you think he's going to coach? He could have resigned, and I'm sure uh, if that was an option that for him, they would have offered it I'm well, sure behind closed doors. They they asked, uh, but maybe they didn't ask. Maybe they said we got to do this because it's a PR nightmare, and they told him that to his face. Well, do do you think he coaches for the Celtics again? Yeah, I do. Why? Because he didn't resign. They suspended him, but he didn't resign. So um, again, you don't you don't think they did all this without talking to him first? Of yeah. course, but I think he's in a no way. No, I think as far as him coaching again, I don't think he's in a win win situation. Because let's say the Celtics do win the championship this year, okay? You, then you can say, well, we I guess we really didn't need him. And if their season, you know, for some reason goes astray. They could blame him for, I guess, you know, well, you know, the culture and blah 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 blah. So I don't, I don't see it as a way where he necessarily comes out on top. I don't think he's going to coach the Celtics again. I don't. Well, their stance may be to ride it out and see, you know, see where it's at, and then at a fifty percent uh, reduced pay rate too, and then see how it how it works out after everything is done. Because people, you know, people. There's some things that stay in the news and stay in the wind, but there's other things that just blow away after a while. And in his particular case, that may very, very well blow away. Now, for the for the people out there, you know, that's on Facebook and some of these other social media, Nia me Long, no, bro, Nia me Long, bro, uh, Halle Berry. Halle Berry was what uh, was was uh, on the on the cover of uh, what People or Time magazine as the most beautiful woman in America. Yeah, Eric Benet. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I know. I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that because we don't know. We as outsiders and as fans are only looking at the outside. We're looking at the look. We're looking at the lust. 
We don't know That's the person. I said. I said me, me alone could have been rationing that man pussy once a month and only doggy style <laughs> and only in the dark and don't suck, you know, and all this. But all we think is, damn, me alone. Why would he cheat on me alone? No, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, okay. uh, no, I don't, I don't think like that. No, because That's when you see some, he might have been doing some of everything that me alone don't do. Yeah, right. Because when we, I mean, well, I mean, to me, well, look. If I was him, I wouldn't use the whole, you know, even if they were going through issues, I wouldn't use that as an excuse to do what he did. That's nothing but toxic masculinity. I mean, we don't know, you know, when you see a person, I don't care if it's Nia or Beyonce or Mariah Carey or Serena, when somebody sees them every day and knows them for who they really are, they see things through a totally different lens than us as fans and admirers see. That part never, no, that part never uh, crossed my mind. Why would you cheat on Nia Long? No, I don't, uh-uh. I don't know Nia Long. I just know she's really pretty. Funny. There's something funny about uh, uh, that Halle Berry thing. So Eric Benet went on that that world tour thing and was on all, Dr. Oz and all these shows. Somebody, he had a sex addiction trying to save his marriage, right? Halle ended up divorcing him anyway and had her run a three white men and a biracial baby. Eric Benet got one female. Prince's ex-wife, so you already know, right? You got Prince's ex-wife, and they got, like, how many kids together now? <laughs> and been together? So, you know, I mean, take it for what it's worth. Yeah. You know? Yeah, pretty much. Maybe it was just not made for them, meant for them to be. Yeah, absolutely, pretty much. So, but, yeah, I just wanted your opinion. Now, let me, now I never got a chance to ask you about Sarver, Sarver the uh, son soon-to-be ex-owner. Well, I mean, the, the 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 blueprint was already made with Sterling, you know. Um, I'm not surprised. Like, I, I'm, I'm none of, nothing that's happened involving that has surprised me. It just hasn't. When they did what they did with Donald Sterling, I said, you know, the the, the tolerance for this kind of stuff is 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 gone. And um, although his wasn't nearly, I mean, maybe not as egregious as Sterling, you know, he's going to pay a price for that. So It ain't egregious because nobody caught it on audio. That's why. It probably was, to be honest with you. Now, he probably didn't go as far as saying he didn't want black people at his basketball games. But I'm pretty sure the level of comments were pretty close. You just didn't get it on tape. That's all. Ultimately, he may end up finding himself in, in, in that same position where, you know, you, you got to sell off your franchise. Well, that's what they're saying now. He's saying that he's going to sell the NBA and WNBA squad. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. But um, we're going to conclude this Sports Plus Life talking-ish. Uh, 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 Tony, I'm going to stay on the phone. Um but um, definitely look for us again. Don't forget to hit that subscription and hit that like button and become part of the Sports Plus Life family. This is another episode of Sports Plus Life talking-ish with them picks. Let the games begin. I will see y'all on Monday. Peace.